Hey everybody, welcome back. Another day of positive parenting with Debbie Godfrey. And today we're talking about autocratic and democratic parenting. That's Debbie, right. What that means. <laughs> we're gonna find out. So autocratic parenting, what does that mean? What does it sound like? Somebody share what it sounds like. What does autocratic parenting sound like? Automated. Okay, automated. My yeah. way or the highway? My way, right. My way or the highway, yes, for sure. Authoritarian. Say that again, Vivian. Authoritarian. Alter yeah, authoritarian. Yep, yep, yep. So basically, this comes from cultures and societies where there's one ruler, like a king or a whatever. Uh, I don't know what all those rulers are called, but it's like an autocratic. So that's one ruler. And in those kind of cultures, what do we want? Um, what do we need? Our, what do we need people to be like? Followers. Followers. And not question anything, just follow. Don't question, just follow. Submissive. Because what if, what if they're not? What if, what if there's, we were in one of those? There is punishment, punishment. Right. right, punishment, like off with your head. So if, we were yes. living, if we're living in an autocratic culture, we need to raise our kids to have those qualities. Otherwise, they'll, they'll die, they'll actually be killed. And so in a democracy, what do we want? What, what, are, what is a democracy? What is that supposed to be like? And I'm, I'm, I had to do like a lot of meditating before I was teaching today because um, of the state of our world right now. Um, it's shifted everything I think about even teaching this segment, but I'm not gonna go off on that tangent today. But what is the supposed democracy look like? Like what are the qualities? Everybody gets to have a say, at least. Everybody has a say. Everybody has a vote and everybody, and you know, everybody's vote counts. Sometimes you're a leader, sometimes you're a follower. So we call that interdependent. And the way I see this here in America and other countries as well, even in India, India's democracy is about 50 years old. Ours is about 200 years old. And they were autocratic societies or anarchy. The way, the way I see this is it's this big two, three, 400 year oops. We created a democracy in these various places in the world. Um, societal structure but we're raising our children autocratically for the most part still. And so they don't know how to operate in a democracy or lead a democracy or follow in a democracy or do anything like that. So that's what we're looking at. Like what are the qualities in an autocratic, in an autocratic society? And then what are the qualities if we were truly living in a dem democratic society? And that's what we're going for here. So I'm gonna use an exercise of a child who is uh, working on his science project. So I need one of you to volunteer to come on the screen with me and Jody will manage our screens. Anybody want to be my child who has a science project due tomorrow and you've known about it for a month and you just told me last night and I went out to Target in the middle of the night to get your stuff and Anita's going to volunteer for this I know. <laughs> Okay, Anita, we'll let you do it, even though I know you volunteered before. <laughs> you need this one. All right. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, so you have this science project. You've known about it for a month, and you're, you just told me I went out and bought, it, bought you all this stuff. What I want everybody to do is I want you to observe my parenting here, and what are the characteristics what are the what are the skills and tools I'm using as a parent what what are what am I using and write those up in the chat because Jody will have less writing to do if you write them <laughs> okay so um, so you're busy working on your science project and you're sitting at the table and I'm gonna storm in above you and just start on you as an autocratic parent Anita why are you taking so why didn't you tell me about this when you first found out about it a month ago Anita, pay attention. 
uh, uh, I, Anita. I, I forgot. Anita, come on. You're always forgetting. Your brother doesn't do that. Look, I need you to stay focused and work on this because otherwise you're going to fail. You need to get a good grade in this. Don't give me that. Oh, here, let me just do it for you. Gosh. Ugh. Okay, stop. How are you feeling there? Not so good. I feel bad. I feel like you don't like me, don't trust me, don't respect me. And how do you feel about your schoolwork? Like, it doesn't matter what I do. Okay. It, like, yeah. And how, how motiv motivated are you to do well in school? Not. Okay. So what were some of the skills and tools I used there, everybody? Do you want to read some of them out, whatever you're seeing, Jody? Sure. So we, you know, people are not motivated. They're discouraged. This is the worst case scenario. There's comparisons between. Okay. Comparison. So compare, comparing to others is an autocratic parenting tool. What else? There's a lot of shame and blame. Using shame. Using shame to motivate is an autocratic parenting tool. Uh, threatening. Threatening. Totally autocratic. That's awesome. Yes. Threatening. And then at the end, the parent said, uh, look, give me this. I'll just do it. Yeah. So doing for them what they can do for themselves is autocratic. So you're taking over things that they could do for themselves. That's autocratic. Okay. I'm going to list out some more, unless there's more in there, Joe. No, that was what I saw. Okay. Being arbitrary is an autocratic characteristic. Giving few choices, autocratic. Punishing, autocratic. Giving rewards for doing what the parent wants, autocratic. Making threats, did we use to say that one maybe? Using fear. Discouraging them to motivate them. You're doing so good, Jody. <laughs> um, Comparing them to others. Oh, we got that one. Taking responsibility for the child's work. We got that one. And using guilt to motivate. Okay. So if I was living, like, I think Malaysia still has an autocratic ruler. I think China still has autocratic ruler in terms of how their communism is. If I was teaching parenting in those countries and they wanted to, it to be culturally appropriate, which they don't. I've taught in China and I've taught democratic parenting there, but if it's to Westerners. But if I was teaching somewhere like that, I would teach people to shame their kids, to um, be arbitrary, to punish them. And that's because if I didn't, those kids will die in those kind of cultures. So they need to be kept down. They need to be kept submissive. I like to say this to you because to take a lot of the judgment out of it, like where this came from was a good intention on a parent's part. It's to keep our kids alive and safe, but trying to um, navigate a democracy, it doesn't, it doesn't have that same effect. All right. Should we try this again? Or are there any comments I need to address? I'm going clip, clip, clip on this. Uh... No, I think you're doing great. And um, Anita, if you could unmute yourself again, and then you can play that. And Deb, I, just to clarify, you would not be teaching those types of skills because that's not the kind of teacher you are. You were saying more like if one were teaching in those environments, you're teaching the skills of survival. Is that accurate? Yeah, I mean, it's like you, you've got to teach the parenting skills to help parents help their kids thrive and survive in the culture in which they live. And so, yeah, I mean, technically um, I wouldn't because I don't believe in it, but, but I know like, okay, let me give you a good example. When I worked in India for a month and I was teaching in schools and I was teaching teachers positive discipline in the classroom. And I mean, I had this come up a lot because again, their democracy is only 50 years old. And so the, um, the philosophy was still, you know, they wanted so much structure in that classroom. Like they don't want kids speaking out. They don't want them out of line. Don't talk back. And yet they want them to be creative and they want them to think and to learn all this stuff. And by the end of my teaching there, I mean, part of me was like, oh, just beat the kids because they wanted that structure 
at the expense of the creativity and you can't you can't really have it both ways and so it just depends on what your purpose is now they did i to their credit all of them hired me because they wanted to bring this into the schools but there was just a huge mind shift that needed to occur in order to get a more democratic traits into a classroom the teachers had to really consider am i willing to give up the order that i have in order to create a more democratic environment here and that doesn't mean that you go into chaos that's not what democracy is supposed to be about it's only that way when it's not run right it's only that way when it's like that's what's happening right now it is not being run right and when it's, it's all chaos right now because we are not living in a functional democracy in any way shape or form so um yeah does that so answer the you, question or address what you said yes okay so people are saying what does the democratic one look like so <laughs> that's what that next don't worry that's coming that's coming right okay okay so it's the same this is the same thing only this time anita you've known about it for a month and when you told me last night, oh, I've got this science project due tomorrow and I need this stuff. As a democratic parent, I could have told her, you know, it's late and I'm not willing to go out and get the stuff tonight. I mean, as a consequence, like that, as a democratic parent, I, I take care of my needs too. And so if something is too much out of my way and the child is not being responsible, I may not go out and get the stuff. I might actually just let, let happen whatever's gonna happen there. However, in this case, for this exercise, Anita was lucky. It was Saturday night last night and I didn't have nothing going on. So I was willing to go to Target and get the stuff she needed last month. Yeah, she's like, all right, mom, thank you. And, um, and so now it's Sunday and she's busily trying to get it done because tomorrow's Monday morning and it is due tomorrow. Okay, so same situation, you're sitting there working on it. Let's just see what being more democratic looks like. Okay. Hey, Anita, is it okay if I join you? Yeah. Okay, I'll just sit here next to you. You look kind of stressed. Oh, it's a lot of work for tomorrow. Yeah, I can see that. Take a deep breath. So what happened? I was nervous about doing it right making it look good yeah i don't know how to do it yeah so and my teacher wasn't helpful mm. i didn't like the ideas she had they were stupid yeah hmm. so how long have you known about this project about i don't know a while okay so how do you, do you think you're going to pull off a decent grade tomorrow? I don't know. I can't, I think I want to do this thing, mm -hmm. but, um, cause it's a, you know, I'm going to make it look like an atom, but I don't oh. get how I'm supposed to use these materials to make it work. And it doesn't seem to be working right. Yeah. But it looks like you're onto something. I bet you can figure that out. Yeah, but these wires are really, they're really bendy and they're getting messed up. Yeah. And it doesn't look like I want it to look like. Well, how about this, Anita? How about if I go make you a sandwich so you can keep yourself fed while you're trying to figure it out? And I just have a question for you. Like, what yeah. can you do different next time to make this so it's not so stressful for you? Well, I could start before. Oh, what a great idea. Can I make a suggestion? Mm, okay. <laughs> How about if you get a big project like this, you do let me know and I'll go to the calendar with you and help you map out, you know, what your process is. Like what you okay. want to do by when. Would that work for you? Okay. All right, I'm gonna go make that sandwich. You keep up the good work. You're doing a great job. I think you're gonna pull this off. Thanks. Okay. All right, stop. How are you feeling that time? Whoa, that was that was intense. <laughs> <laughs>
I hope you guys are writing what qualities I'm using. I forgot to say that before I went into this. So what was my parenting skills and tools I was using there? So go ahead and talk, Anita, how that felt. So it felt much less, it felt very supportive. Okay, like good. I, I knew you were on to me, um, but I also felt like you're trying to help me. Okay. And you did go out and get all the stuff at the last minute. I got credit and, there. <laughs> yeah. And I know I'm trying to make it a certain way and it's not doing what I want, but you're not, not passing judgment on that. So that's okay. That's so non, non judgmental is going to be one of the um, democratic skills or tools. And you didn't press me on like, I think it was a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And I, you was know, it I, confrontational. Right. And that's, I was just trying to help, help people see what you can do without being, I told you so, or why can't you, like what the alternative to going down that track is. Because I didn't really need to go there when we were interacting, but I, I did just for the purposes of the exercise. Um, mm -hmm. How did you feel about your schoolwork? I felt a little more, I felt encouraged and that gave me some hope. Using because you were motivate. yeah praising that's, me yeah that's democratic is using encouragement to motivate rather than using fear or guilt to motivate right okay what and else? then the plan for the future was nice because it gave me more hope again you know like it doesn't always have to be this way right so helping them see how much they can do helping them see how much they can do is democratic and that felt empowering Good. What else are we getting out of the chat, Jody? <clears throat> There's a lot. Uh, so active listening. Yes, listening. Ideas. That's a big one. Yes. Uh, Amanda said something about getting asking questions so that the kids think. Yes, <laughs> you've got that one. That's a good one. Yes, yes. for sure. Um, providing support. Um, yeah, asking questions that lead them for future planning, that they could see a different way of this being, um, yep. involving them with the thinking to come up with solutions. All of that is democratic. That's how we want to be democratic, to teach, train them to be in a democratic environment. Absolutely. Letting them make their own decisions. That's a one as well. Like She can make her own decision of how this is going to happen for her. Debbie, can I just ask how you can do this? I mean, how can we help? I'm sorry to interrupt you. That's okay. Um, how do we help them to see how much they can do? I mean, I'm having a real issue here with my daughter on that. So I know she's got potential, but I just can't get her to see it. Right. And I know she can do more. I know there's a bright spark somewhere there, but I can't seem to reach out and it's a huge struggle so it is and and that's what that's what this whole week has been about is this Hausen that's speaking uh diana 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 okay i can't i couldn't see on my screen diana so um yeah i mean the encouragement piece is so important here so remember encouragement is looking for the specific so if you want to help her see how much you could she can do you want to look for her small efforts and her tries and what she is doing well and you can help her build from there. So wow, yeah. it looks like you're so powerful when you did that thing and you describe whatever that thing is. Children mm. often build off their small successes. And that's why I'm a big proponent of creating, creating, making things easier for your kids rather than harder so that they can have a success and then they can right. build from that. So rather than rather than making it like my kid the grandkids in their room is such a disaster and that's a whole nother story with their parents but i <laughs> prefer much more order there so when i'm going to go in and tackle that with them which i do sometimes i will walk in with them and i'm like okay let's look around and let's pick one thing that you can do in here and this morning i was like do you think you could manage to pick up all the clothes and put them in this basket and they're like yeah we can do that so it's like not clean up that room because that's impossible and way overwhelming but just pick that one thing so that's what i would suggest that you do with that no i the thing is i'm doing all of these things but i'm not getting anywhere 
well, I'm just doing these things. Is, yeah, I, I coached this. I'm early. doing these. I'm yeah. doing these things. Yeah, just I don't like that. to do the spoon feeding. I do the thing and leave it there, but not getting there yet. I don't know. You'll get there. You keep working at it. And and as I, I coached earlier today, if you're in that place, remember, we're just in the very beginning of a class that's going to go on for five or six weeks. So you do not have enough tools yet to handle all the things that are coming up with your kids. So please, if you're in that place like Diana of being overwhelmed, stick with the lessons each day. So today you're going to practice this autocratic and democratic parenting. Um, and yesterday you practiced something about encouragement and Monday we're going to practice something about saying no in a fun way. We've got one different thing every day. So that's all I want you to do right now is just one thing a day and don't worry about the big picture. The big picture will um, get less as you go along, but don't focus on that because you're going to get yourself all overwhelmed. Okay. Stick with the topics. And today it is democratic parenting. So I'm going to go down the rest of my list and see if we, um, oh, and I like somebody wrote, increase your self-care. Totally a great catch. Good job. Good job. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Uh, helping them repair their mistakes. That's a democratic characteristic of a parent, helping them, letting them and helping them repair their mistakes, respecting them. We've talked about this a little bit, showing them respect, knocking on their doors, asking them before you, you know, help them. I always say, can I make a suggestion? And I said that in that thing with Anita, can I give you a suggestion? And she was like, uh, and if she would have said no, I would have walked off you guys, not in anger. I would just would have said, oh, okay. Like she doesn't want my wisdom and that's her problem, not mine. I'm not going to get upset about that. I'm going to turn and I'm going to walk away. And 90% of the kids will run after you and say, what? Tell me what you were going to say. They can't stand it when we withhold. And so you're much more effective and powerful. Um, <clears throat> okay. Uh, let's see, letting them help you. This is empowering. Remember, if you give them the power to help you with something and you can state like, I have a problem. Can you help me with it? And in this case, I, you know, I have a problem. I feel like it's my job to make sure you get a good grade on this thing because otherwise I'm a bad mom. Help me out with this here. <laughs> and the teenager will absolutely give yourself, um, give you some um, <clears throat> coaching on what you can do to be helpful to them. And I asked them like, how can I be helpful to you? And it might be staying out of it. With my son, he, I, he needed me to really stay out of it. And I could always tell when I needed to connect with him because he did his work. He, he was responsible. He did it in his own way, in his own time. If I started nagging him, like, have you done your homework? Like I would look in my own head and go, why are you saying that to him? He does this, he, he handles it. I'm saying it because I want to connect with him. And so I have to rephrase it and say, hey, do you want to go for a walk or a hike? So I have to find a way to connect with him other than nagging him about something that he's already responsible before, responsible for. Otherwise I create a fight or a power struggle with him. That was my task because he really was good about, he was good about being responsible because I gave him the responsibility from a young age and he was capable of it. So yes. Um, so letting them help you, being kind and firm, so important. That is the ultimate of democratic parenting, which is why we've handled it in so many different topics in this class, and we will continue to do that. Kind and firm, democratic, okay? Um, giving clear boundaries, and this is the setting them up for success. So making sure we're very clear about what we're asking them to do or, or whatever the situation is, have to be clear. The, the autocratic way is to be vague because that keeps them on edge, that keeps them in fear. And fear is what we want if we're raising them autocratically. Giving the child responsibility is democratic. <clears throat> and finally, helping them discover how much they can do. Helping them discover how much they can do. You can do this. Okay, so um, the, the website that I sent you to today on the, um, I sent you the email really late because I had that call and I got all behind in my work today. So um, I posted a, um, an article that I wrote 25 years ago. And I know that because I think I referenced my kids were five and seven and my son is 29 now. So this is like 25 years ago. And, um, and it has um, a thing out of the old workbook about 
Yes, thank you. Somebody's holding it up in the screen there. Jody, can you highlight uh, Humara's screen? She printed it off of the, um, off of, there it goes. So this is up on the website here. So this has a lot of these things that I'm talking about today. So make sure you go check that out over on my um, blog post. Thank you. Yeah, that was out of an old, it's not in there anymore. It's not in the workbook anymore. It's out of an old one. <clears throat> okay. The link is in the chat and you'll also have the email. If you're on this call, that means you sent Debbie, you signed up and Debbie will have sent you an email and the link is in there to that, that article that Humera sent, posted up. Okay, so Thanks, for Debbie. all of you, are you ready to do a, a group thing, Jody? Yeah, let's do okay. it. Okay, so for all of you, here's your questions. Um, how were you raised? Were you raised autocratic or democratic or permissive? So there's how are, you have three questions. How were you raised? And as a result of that, how did you feel? And how did you react? So how were you raised? How did you feel? And how did you react? And I had this copied and I forgot to send it to you, Jody. So I'm sorry, okay. I'm just looking for it. And I, my, my screen froze. So how were you raised? How did you feel? How did you react? Spend the last four minutes of class discussing that in your groups. So the first thing you'll do when you get into your groups is unmute yourself, if you can, if you're not driving and if you don't have sleeping babies, uh, and then go ahead and discuss those things and I'll put a little message out to all the groups once you get there. Okay, ready, go, bye-bye. There they go. Sorry, I was hoping to give them more time to do that. I didn't realize I got so into it. Oh, we got, they got four minutes, that's good. Yeah. Okay, cool. And so I just anyway, sent a broadcast note. Did you see the little thing? I at thought the it popped up before I came back in. Yeah, that was perfect. Thank you. Great. I know. I just, uh, yeah. It's a whirlwind today. Woo. So any of you that are staying here with um, Jody and I, can any of you come off mute or are you here because you cannot come off mute? And if you want to chat in the chat, we'll keep talking about this topic. I was raised um, where my mom was autocratic, 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 and she'd get really mean, and then she'd like whack us or hit us or something, and then she'd feel guilty. So she'd get really permissive and let us get away with everything until she got really sick of that. And then she'd, <clears throat> and then she'd go back to autocratic again. So it was this vacillation. My dad was pure autocratic. It's like his way or the highway, that was it. So that's what I had. Deb, that's a great point because a lot of people were saying in the chat, like I'm this way, and my husband or my spouse is that way and what do I do and another question that came up is I'm a single mom and I feel like I have to be good cop and bad cop yep. and yeah I think redefining <clears throat> what all of those things are it's not that you're good cop all the time when you're democratic it's but it's more productive and not punitive right, right? Right. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. And I, I just think I, when I'm teaching a class, if I have a dozen or 18 people in a class, usually there's one, maybe two parents that had a parent who actually was a democratic parent, like had those kind of traits. But most of the time they're either autocratic or permissive. There's very little of the kind and firm democratic. So unfortunate, but true. Anyway, we're all, get us, get everybody back. I, um, I'm trying to find that. Okay, so 60 seconds and they'll be all back. Yeah, so there was Perfect. something about somebody not being able to hear, but there was a conversation going on. There she is. Hi, Diana. I'm sorry, could you not hear in your group? Oh, she was there and now like, she's gone. Yeah, yeah I think there might be some connectivity issues going on because I think that's what I, what happened to me, I don't think was me. I think it was the connection was being funky. It's okay. We're, we're doing technology to the best of our ability. Yeah. And <laughs> please don't let the technology get in your way. You can nope. journal these things, yep. like write about what it was like to have growing up in your house, because that's so much of what we learned is what we saw modeled. And if dad did something different than mom, and if you had different homes or a single parent home, you made decisions about how things get done and, and uh, what's allowed and not so uh you can journal write those things you don't it's easy to talk about them and have other people share their stories but just know that you are able to rewrite those ideas and here comes everybody deb hey everybody's back welcome back right. 
fabulous. I hope that was a, a good conversation for you all and that you kind of got some good insights and awarenesses. We're a little over time, so I'm going to let Jody close. Good. I love seeing the thumbs up. I'm going to let her close this out. Have a fabulous weekend, everybody. Monday, we're going to be talking about, um, what are we? Uh, oh, building self-esteem. That's what we're talking about all week. We're going to be doing a little more of that on Monday. So, um, and it's one of my other favorite exercises. <laughs> They're all my favorite. <laughs> It's a good one, though. Don't miss Monday. <laughs> Very good. Yes. Well done, everybody. And like we were saying, if you ever have technology issues on this, don't worry about it. Just go ahead and journal what your own prompts and reactions are. You can get a ton of value by just reflecting on what kind of a home you grew up in, what you think your rules are, and then apply this, this activity um, to the kind of parenting you're doing. So go and practice. Do, um, do well. I put in the chat... Uh, the link that Pete, you can share to have more friends show up. We have space for 100. We'd love to have a full house. And with that, go ahead and unmute yourself and say goodbye and happy weekend. Bye, everybody. Thank bye, you, bye. 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 Thank you bye, so bye. much. Bye. Thank bye. you. Bye. 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 Bye.